Windows Podcast. Welcome, welcome all you beautiful bastards to the Humanist Podcast with your loyal boy, Hammer, and of course, well, it's me, Steph. How are you, man? I am excited for DC's sipping, sake. Sipping something good? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Drinking right. <laughs> something good there, are we? Yeah. Uh, just, just listen to this. Listen here. Oh, yeah, that's man. That that's some real mm. real ASMR right there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, mm. what do we what do we have on the plate today, Mister? Oh, uh, actually, a bunch of stuff. But first of all, I guess um, you know DC fandom happened, and oh, yeah. uh, they dropped a lot of content. And you know, I'm not a huge buff on on DC at all, really. I'm more of a Marvel guy, but you know, oh yeah. Uh, so I, I I don't really I'm not that familiar with the content like or like the comics and stuff, but of course played all the yeah. Arkham games, uh, which is pretty relevant today, and <laughs> yeah. um and watched you know the all the movies that came out, some of the animated ones too. But yeah. seeing all of this has made me a lot more excited for DC because of course we know they they've had a bit of a rocky start. Um, yeah, with their cinematic universe, a lot of. Uh, a lot of unfortunate events happened um, in their attempt mm-hmm. to kind of catch up to Marvel, yeah. and um, so we have we're gonna run through that, and then after that, we will talk about this other game that just came out of yeah, basically nowhere. Uh, yeah, it just or out of China. nowhere, just like <laughs> yeah, out of out of out of like Mao's little red, and that's uh, Black Myth Wukong, which we saw oh, the yeah. the trailer for and. So we're going to talk about that. But first, I guess it's the um, DC content. So so what, what do you want to start with there? There's quite a quite a lot to pick from. Uh, I think I want to start with the Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League game. Mm-mm-mm. Good choice. Um yeah, I just saw the, my I just saw the trailer. Uh, yeah. Just, just before we went on air. And um well, it got me hyped. It was no gameplay, but it was like very. <laughs> the atmosphere was very cool. Yeah, and um, it's made from or the the guys who made Ark the Arkham Batman Arkham games. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I then, like yeah. So we have like, uh, I guess it's pretty promising for the quality of the gameplay as well, considering yeah. the, the Arkham games. So. Uh, you know, they all keep a really high standard, both in presentation, storytelling, and gameplay. So mm-hmm. I'm all for it. Um, but uh, did, did you see the movie Suicide Squad? Uh, no, I actually didn't. I actually didn't. But I've I've limited, you know, uh, knowledge of of the source material. Yeah, I mean, same here. Well, I, I did see the movie, uh, and I I thought it was like one of those. It had some good parts in it, uh, and a lot of and some potential, but then ultimately, just a lot of most of it didn't work for me. But it seems no. from the trailer, though the the game seems to bring the good parts. Uh, it seems to bring what the movie did right for me, um, and um, you know, so I, I I have faith that Rocksteady, the developer, they they know what they're talking about. They're like, what know what they're doing? Yeah. They they're probably gonna make it, and they have experience with the kind of like third person combat also, which mm-hmm. is very very important to nail. I feel if they're gonna do a third person, which I probably think they will. Yeah. So like, do you know any of the? I mean, obviously you know Harley Quinn, and um, of course, and of course, and then there was like Deadshot, I guess, and mm-hmm. uh, what's the other guy's name? Like Shark King? Is that his name? I don't really know, but it's the shark guy. <laughs> yeah, it's the shark dude. <laughs> yeah. uh, you you want to know a fucked up fact about him? Mm. In uh, the what is it like the Justice League Dark or whatever Apocalypse War, the new animated movie? Yeah, it was established that him and John Constantine were fucking. Seriously? <laughs> yeah, it, it's canon. I, it's so messed up. Oh, <laughs> yeah! It's so funny, uh, and it's just like 
it's just this scene so, they come into a bar and then it's like with with harley quinn and what no not harley quinn with um oh, he, constantine comes in with some people i don't remember exactly who and they it's just like a bunch of villains there that they're gonna team up with um and then you see like harley quinn and the shark guy and he's like oh boy uh, we have some history it's like oh what the what you and harley and he's like no no not not harley <laughs> And the other guy's like shark king shark or something like that. Just, no, what the fuck? Oh, Jesus Christ! Well, I mean, does he does he even have this? I think sharks do they have a protruding proboscis? <laughs> I think so. Like, do they? <laughs> or is it like the human side uh, of him that has I... the? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know, but whatever it was, John Constantine would have to apply some magic on his butthole after, I'm pretty sure. Oh, yeah. And, and, and anyway, now that we got that traumatizing thing out of the way. <laughs> yeah, back to, back to the trailer. So it was, um, yeah, it, it looks really kind of jolly and fun, you know, with the uh, yeah. sense of humor, but also uh, they can kind of do a, a serious. Uh, story bit also i yeah. feel so they they've placed it kind of in the middle of of the humor and uh kind of like the the movie i guess yeah uh, yeah definitely uh and i i wonder like since this game you'll also be able to i assume play as several members of mm. the suicide squad as well yeah so i'm i'm really wondering like how this is going to shape up in terms of um of gameplay and uh, is it like do you just switch character automatically on uh on a story basis or according to the story or do you kind of just um you can pick characters level them up and whatnot you know mm. no it's it's actually really hard to kind of get it just says action adventure shooter uh and that you know the most dangerous villains are teaming up yeah <laughs> <It's> yeah not... <laughs> Uh oh yeah, it says here actually it's uh it's four player co op. Okay, well. so it's four player co op. Yeah, yeah, you can play solo so you or it's... you can play up to four players, and you can choose between the characters you saw in the trailer. It seems. Yeah. So okay. uh, so that's cool. I mean, I like that. It it does this kind of game does have some potential for you know cosmetic upgrades and microtransactions. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, it the... does. Oh. Well, who's the publisher? Warner Brothers. Okay, they did the Shadow of War game, which had a, quite a few microtransactions. But um, yeah. if I'm not mistaken, but maybe this is a game we could, you know, do a do a let's play of. <laughs> yeah, it, that could be fun. Yeah, sure. The we humid let's the let's play. Humid. The humid let's play. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, anything more to say about this trailer? No, I don't think. I think uh, it looks promising. Looks okay. Yeah, it, it had the. I'm just. I'm curious about the story to it. Like, is this set in the sort of injustice universe or something? Because Superman clearly here, he, he's not a good guy. So no. I he mean, having not. having him as an enemy, I think that's probably the most. I mean, um, then you're fucked. Then yeah. you're pretty much fucked. <laughs> yep. Uh, and I'm really curious to see how they, how they'll manage to, you know, do anything to him. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's. Well, we'll just have to play again. Yeah. So anyway. Um, okay, so moving on to the next, um, the the next fandom trailer. The should we go for the Snyder Cut, the Justice League Snyder Cut one? Sure, sure. So uh, I yeah. actually have a little bit of a unique perspective here. I did not see the original Justice League. Yeah. So, and uh, yeah, I've just seen this trailer uh, and I'm actually pretty hyped. And then, yeah. as I understood, there was like a massive outcry to get this out there. Yeah. I did like all the other Snyder cuts, so to speak. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I saw the original Justice League and I thought it was, you know, it was, it was okay. Nothing special. I only saw it once, and I didn't feel the need to see it again. Um, but I think because Snyder also had his versions, additional or like how to say extended versions or up, upgraded versions, so to speak, of uh, his some of his other movies too, including Watchmen. 
Yeah. Um, and I love the Ultimate Edition there. And then you have, mm. the, um, of course, his, his his ultimate version of the Dawn of Justice, uh, Batman v Superman, which mm. was yeah. the only version I saw. And I'm, I'm kind of glad I didn't see the original. I just, I only saw the ultimate version and I thought from that perspective, maybe find a movie actually quite good. Like, apart yeah. from the, why did you say that name? It had its issues, of course, but I thought it was overall a pretty fun movie. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, that movie was fun. <laughs> let's, just, <Yeah. laughs> let's just say that. Uh, well, um, I don't really know. I don't have too much to say about it, but HBO Max, it's going to be directly on HBO Max. Good yeah. Movies. So it seems. And uh, if yeah. I'm not mistaken, HBO Max is like, if you have an HBO subscription right now, you're kind of having HBO Max as well. Mm. You're going to have that um, as far as I could understand. So, I mean, like me who has a subscription on HBO, I'll just see it as soon as it pops. Yeah. And when is it popping? Does that say 2021? Just 2021. So. Oh, okay. That's a no while from now. On that one. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Let's hope we see 2021. <laughs> yeah, let's let's hope so. Let's hope so. Uh, you know the the original Justice League as it is now, it went through some pretty significant reshoots and edits yeah. because, um, as we were talking a little bit before the podcast, you know, Zack Snyder, the director, had some had a pretty severe family tragedy during the shooting of this. I think his daughter committed suicide or something. Uh, it was yeah. pretty bad. So you know, obviously he had issues finishing the movie and so you know they they got joss whedon the director for the original avengers to do reshoots and all that and uh you know he he tried to sprinkle in some of that avengers humor and everything into it and it just it works in marvel but it, it really didn't work in in this one maybe he it just felt really unoriginal the humor was pretty flat to me mm, yeah. um and he didn't need it like I'm cool with the Flash being a little bit of a slapstick character and whatever, but um, I don't know. It just all felt pretty uninspired. And, you know, the villain Steppenwolf is supposed to be some kind of super badass villain and whatever, but he was super forgettable. Yeah. And uh, But in the trailer, they show that they've, they've redesigned him. So now he has armor and stuff, and he looks a lot more menacing now, uh, let me tell you that. And... Um, uh, and you got to see good old Darkseid himself, because yeah. he's been teased a lot, uh, especially through Batman's nightmares and whatever. Um, but you never got to see him until now. Um, and apparently, like now, he straight up is in the movie. Probably not, not yeah. as the main villain, obviously, but he he does make an appearance, and that is kind of like what they were leading up to, similar yeah. to how Marvel was, of course, teasing Thanos. Mm -hmm. um so yeah i mean it looked really cool and the the trailer even for me who has seen the original version seeing the trailer um for for the snyder cut actually made me pretty hyped it was a lot of footage i hadn't seen before and the, the tone was different and they they put that fucking hallelujah song that was also during yeah. the sex scene in watchmen which i thought was a nice touch <laughs> yeah yeah i saw somebody comment that yeah um <laughs> But what do you think? Do you think they are just teasing like the juicy bits uh, just to hype us up? Or do you think that they actually kind of made uh, like the cosmetic uh, Steppenwolf change? Uh, do you think they, they did a lot of that? You know, I hope they did. Uh, well, most right. of all, I just hope that they made the movie more Snydery, I guess. <laughs> that they, they made yeah. it, yeah, that they made it like true to his vision and that they made it more um just yeah just how he envisioned it and that you know they made some edits they removed some lines they probably added some deleted scenes and hopefully just makes the movie a more rich experience and a more whole experience because the the other one was just like i don't know pretty mediocre mm, yeah so this one has the potential to outshine that one yeah, yeah, yeah. I think already by the trailer, I'm I'm pretty sure that already I'll be more satisfied with this movie than the original. Yeah. 
yeah and like all the hype also kind of contributes to that you know yeah yeah um okay so then the final dc fandom trailer mm -hmm. it was the batman yeah the batman another uh another origin story well i guess it's an origin story i'm not really sure um where the movie's gonna take place but now we have another new batman and that's robert pattinson what do you think of that mm. well i uh was very skeptical at first of course i actually did like uh ben affleck or batfleck yeah <laughs> as batman <laughs> because i don't know i he just got some of that heft to him you know mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> that i like my batmans to have uh so <laughs> but um but when i saw this trailer i was actually quite positively surprised by how uh you know batman-y he looked yeah yeah uh and maybe i shouldn't be that surprised but robert pattinson i mean whenever you think about him it's like cedric diggory and twilight and stuff <laughs> like that you know and um yeah, I don't know. Just, but this this trailer did really portray him in a Batman-y fashion. Uh, okay. He was like very masculine, and you know, he looked, you know, gritty and depressed, like Bruce <laughs> Wayne should. You know, <laughs> and there's no and, sparkles. No, no sparkles, no sparkles at all. This is uh, this is like um, Nolan esque kind of you know feel. It's very yeah. dark and gritty, and I do love that. So, and um, they're bringing back the Riddler as well. Riddler, yeah, that's the. Um, and I, I mean, the Riddler. It's been such a long time since he was a villain. Yeah, ever since uh, Jim Carrey. Yeah, that's uh, Jim Carrey. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's right. So uh, I'm looking forward to that actually. Uh, he was always one of my one of the the villains I was a little bit afraid of when I was a kid. Oh yeah, uh, from yeah, uh, watching like the animated series and stuff like that. I thought uh... the Riddler was kind of scary. <laughs> yeah, just the concept of him. I don't know. I just don't know what it was, but <laughs> being all green and. <laughs> and unpredictable. Yeah, I mean that's uh, I, I can kind of see how that would be scary and um but you know um on the topic of robert pattinson as a as a casting choice as well like mm. for him i was fortunate enough to see the um, the movie the lighthouse with him yeah. and willem dafoe they're the only no uh, well yeah there's very few people in this movie and and there, there's oh. basically there's only two characters and a mermaid <laughs> and uh yeah. so but there's only two human characters and that's the two of them and they carry the whole movie and in that movie yeah. they're just like dirty grimy men who stuck on a lighthouse in the early 19th century no early 20th century i guess it is and um you know they're stuck there for months and they they get stuck because the there's a storm and stuff and it's all in black and white and super kind of like um it's like this nasty atmosphere and in that movie mm -hmm. Pattinson completely changed my view of him um oh. just he played him and Willem Dafoe they played so well and yeah. they were just like so I don't know, man. They did just like you could almost feel the dirt, the dirt and the seawater come yeah. through the screen yeah. when you saw it. And uh, I, I also highly recommend that movie to all listeners. Okay. Like it's a great movie. But so I, I think after okay. I saw that, I was like, yeah, this guy can play gritty and dark uh, and sell mm. it. You know, he's he's not what he used to be anymore. And um, uh, <laughs> but I mean, he maybe he had the potential to that, to do that all the way back, but. He just never got the opportunity, you know. It's easy to kind of judge people on on the role they're cast for. Of course, if they play it to to perfection, then you kind of think, okay, that's their their thing. They're mm -hmm. always going to be like that. Yeah, but that's kind of the hallmark of a good actor, also, that you can convince people that this is how you are, you know. And yeah, this comes natural to you. I... Uh, but yeah, and Willem Dafoe. I love him also, so I, I think I'm gonna 
put that on my list. The Lighthouse. You should. Yeah. It's so um, it's by the the studio A twenty four that they make yeah. a lot of those. Um, they they've made some of the better <laughs> horror movies in recent times. The like, genre here, the genre is so you, by the way. Oh yeah, <laughs> <That's> <laughs> like, yeah. All right. Lighthouse. It's like British. It's horror. It's. Uh, saw some tentacles <laughs> <laughs> yeah so, yeah, it, it, yeah it does have that lovecraftian twang to mm-hmm. it um in all the right ways and of course that what that's what attracted me to it in the first place but you know yeah a24 as well um because they made hereditary they made uh midsommar and yeah. uh you know they have a lot of those like new horror movies that, and the witch that are kind of like trying to switch up the formula and I'm yeah, really loving what they're doing. Yeah, that I I was about to say that. I love that they're trying to innovate. Yeah. I mean, all props to them for innovating because that genre is so well trodden, you know. It's yeah. just became very formulaic. It's just so fresh. Very formulaic. Okay. So back to the trailer. Yeah. Um we don't really understand too much of the context other than the Riddler is leaving some riddles. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and God damn uh, Riddler's leaving Riddler <laughs> leaving riddles yeah. in my city. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh but uh I think that uh the one shot that we got and uh, if you want to follow this uh I can, yeah, that's like uh, 104 or something. Yeah, 10, 104 about the official trailer. Uh, you can see like the Bruce Wayne Pattinson. Yeah. And he does look really, you know, yeah, and, and, and 111 also. He does look really kind of battle hardened and gritty in that shot mm-hmm. uh, with like uh, bags under his eyes and, you know, He's a slim, pr- pr- profound jaw. Yeah, he's like yeah. It just just speaks to me. This is how Batman should look. So I was very, very positive, uh, and we're positively surprised. Yeah, and um, he he yeah he really brings that noir kind of vibe to the whole thing. And you know, while Batfleck brought the physicality to it. This guy is more slick and more, you know, I, I, I want to say not quite depressed, but, yeah, you know, more of, a, I guess, a little bit more realistic in some senses. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I feel that. Yeah, right. You you hit it on the head. Uh, it's like um, Batfleck is, is a little bit more caricature-y. You know, yeah, yeah. He's uh, emphasizing the Batman traits very, very hard with yeah. the bulkiness and the, you know, the <laughs> not using weapons, just hitting. But also the little combat uh, or action scene we got to say where he kind of beats up this freak. Uh, <laughs> it was also very, very well done. Probably yeah. why they picked that one. Yeah. Uh, you know, like the, the extreme fast violence. <laughs> yeah, and also how he just like kept. Yeah, this is this seems to be a very angry Batman too, because he just kept fucking punching him when he was on the ground and stuff. Yeah, I think this is dark. I think they they've they're gonna go dark with this one. Yeah, uh, really I mean, dark. if he's the one who's eventually somehow gonna uh, you know join up, meet the Joker, the the current Joker. Mm-hmm then that kind of needs to be but I, I don't know like to what extent that's going to happen i know that the joker 2 is going to include but do you think villains. they're going to do that i don't know put in the i i really don't know because i know that the joker 2 is going to include some other villains uh i don't remember who but then you know it, it is possible that that this uh <laughs> you know <laughs> What what if the Jared Leto Joker just appeared <laughs> like a cameo, like the last scene after the credits? Jared Leto's Joker. He, he's like, just, <laughs> he's just like, I'm not gonna shock you. I'm just gonna surprise you really, really bad. 
<laughs> oh, that would be bad. <laughs> that would be fucking horrible. I mean, to to be fair, I'll I'll give I'll I'll give way where like you know give how to say um, credit where it's due. He was one yeah. of the better parts of the Justice, no, the you know, the Suicide Squad movie. For me, I didn't mind him right, that much. Right, right. But the problem is, there's a, a bunch of stuff with him that apparently was cut that Jared Leto got pretty bummed about. And I thought wow. if he was the actual villain of that movie, the movie would probably have been a lot better. Yeah, because the villain we got was shit. Thug Joker doesn't really hold a candle to um, realistic Joaquin Phoenix Joker. No, oh, that's the new favorite. Yeah, um, and Absolutely. that that was such a fucked up movie too. <laughs> you saw it, right? Of course, of course. Yeah, that was an. <laughs> 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 <Yeah>. <laughs> that that movie was so uncomfortable, though. Oh yeah, sure. But I feel that 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 feeling that you're describing right there, the kind of slight, you know, you 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 don't really know how to feel about stuff. That's like the perfect. That's how the Joker should make you feel. True. You know, just uneasy. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, you you know, the that. promise of, of violence and uh, this kind of slightly comedic character, but also a, a misunderstood freak, you know, mm -hmm. very, very incalculable. You just really don't know what he's going to do next. And somehow very, like, good at what he does, you know. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm just a little bit like... Um, I'm wondering if they're going to use that Joker or if they're going to use a Joker at all uh, or if this is like a separate thing because that's that's the problem with the DC Universe now. It's so spread out. There's so mm. many different versions of things now. So like... Why did they have to reboot Batman again? Is that because Batfleck was like not too good received or... No, I, I think it was because Ben Affleck stepped away from the role, if I'm not mistaken. Um, because he was making the Batman movie for a while as director, and he was considering to star in it. But then it just kind of changed, and eventually he just stepped more and more and more away from the project. And then suddenly Robert Pattinson came in. Mm. Uh, but now it's revealed that you know he's going to have a bigger role in the Snyder cut, it seems, and also he's going to be still the Batman in the Flash movie. So oh. I, I, I don't really know what's going on. <laughs> That's confusing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's really confusing. And uh, it's kind of the problem with this universe because so many things happen that just kind of split it. Yeah, that's not too good for the branding. But I, I just hope that they kind of settle now, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, just go with, with what they're creating right now. And, um, but overall, yeah. for this this the trailer, I'm very happy. I think it looked good. You don't really get to see that much, but you get to see how Robert looks like yeah. Batman and who does, you know. And it seems um, that the, there's this thing I saw in the comments as well about like how this seems to be more of a detective story, and mm -hmm. that could be really interesting because, of course, Batman is supposed to be. The world's greatest detective as well as a vigilante you know so yeah i'm really interested to see how that pans out i, li I like the um, i like the angle they're taking so yeah excited to see and that's it. why the riddler is like the perfect villain also yeah oh uh, yeah i think this is going to be a good movie but we'll have to wait and see but this is a definite like see on premiere day for me or at least very close to it yeah i'd say so i agree Okay, so then we go to this fucking insane game uh, that we mentioned mm -hmm. earlier, Black Myth Wukong. Uh, Dragon Ball I don't origin. know where to start. Yeah, it's like uh, the, the game is based on the Journey to the West mythology. Yeah. Uh, which is like the most well-known literary work in asia almost um, well, yeah definitely it's at least very popular yeah it's very popular uh and a lot of western people also know about you know this uh this um story and mythology yeah 
and uh, this is the I, I guess it's like a very dark soul C RPG kind of adventure action RPG style. Yeah, uh, it reminded me of a little bit of Dark Souls or Sekiro, maybe. Yeah, um, yeah, it it, yeah. it wears. I yeah, it, it looked like Dark Souls and Bloodborne and stuff in in some of the ways that everything kind of moved. Uh, when it, in terms yeah. of like the how the combat handles and stuff, but but um, obviously this one is way more high paced and more fluid. Yeah. Yeah, it looked like that a little bit more closer to traditional action RPGs, maybe that are not yeah. that heavy on the swings. Yeah, a little bit more pacey, but it does look. I mean, the environments and like I think that's why I I'm getting the Dark Souls and Sekiro vibes because because of the setting, uh, because the mm. environments are very you know cultured. They're very inspired <laughs> by this uh, this setting, right? Yeah. So. Um, but it, it looks gorgeous. It just looks insane. Yeah. I mean, Unreal really 4. Uh, I, was, I was also surprised by, you know, how it just escalated. It started with this, um, you know, he's fighting these wolf people or, or dog people or something. I'm not that familiar with the lore, so don't hate me, but... Um, and then it just kind of escalates and escalates, and then there's this big werewolf thing, and then there's this giant with a massive head in the woods all of a sudden, and you know, it's just suddenly he's just fighting in the clouds with this. Um, and I think that, um, after the there was some kind of time lapse, something, something after the wolf boss, where uh, like he saw him himself in from the future came yeah. to stop him, um. And you, but I think that was like a teaser. The the first uh, kind of what ten minutes or so, I think, is like from the start of the game, and then the the last was like maybe like end game content. I don't know, but it looked like you were like <laughs> fighting in you were fighting God basically in the heavens. Yeah. The last scene. <laughs> it, yeah, it was just it really escalated in all the good ways. I feel. Um, yeah. And it just like kept surprising. It looked slick and beautiful. Like the art design was great. And yeah, and it also seemed that you know you can transform into a like a small cicada, the small bug. Yeah, kind of that's like a stealth transport mode. Uh, but when you when he defeated that guy with a flaming uh, staff, yeah, he transformed into him. Later, you got like his staff, and then you could transform into him. Yeah. I was surprised by that, that guy. Yeah, that was like a really cool way to do it. But I think that's inspired by the journey to the West because he, he could like transform into all sorts of different animals and stuff. Yeah, and he he does have some of the other um, characteristics of Wukong as well, like how he can use his um, neck hair to create clones. And yeah. he can extend like the, the, the pole he's using can extend. Oh, I think it's like yeah. indefinitely almost. Indefinitely. Yeah, it's indefinitely. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the greatest that was like AOE the last ever. scene. In, yeah, that was the, the last scene. He was fighting all the god, gods, all the god soldiers in heaven. Yeah. He just like, yeah, I'm just going to extend this like for a couple of miles <laughs> and then just wipe, wipe all you guys out. Yeah. So, and, and he was uh, riding the Nimbus cloud too. Yeah, I saw. I saw. But what do you think about the setting? It's it's a really cool setting, right? It's not that explored, I feel, in Western media. Personally, I love it because I, I don't know that much about Chinese mythology and culture. So if this is relatively faithful to the journey of the West, I'm, I'm pretty excited to see because I, I imagine that it, you know, as we saw, it contained a lot of fantastical elements, a lot of cool looking uh, creatures and and you know, races and all that. And it looked like it had all the, how to say, um, like a lot of cool, fantastical elements that I'm hyped for. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, I've, I've seen some of the, you know, like Dragon Ball is a very famous, uh, very famous property that has been inspired by Journey to the West. Mm -hmm. um, because in the, in the very beginning of the original Dragon Ball, uh, it was basically an adaptation of Journey to the West where Goku is basically Sun Wukong. And... Mm -hmm. He also has that staff that can extend, and he rides the Nimbus Cloud, and he can make 
Well, he does make clones, but he has like uh, he can do like mirror images by moving really fast. Um, so yeah, he has some of that same thing, and they also fight the Ox King, like they do in Journey to the West. And it's a I really got Goku vibes as well when he was riding the cloud with the staff and all that, and just you know, I'm curious to see what you know the original looks like. What's the original story? You know, I'm I'm really yeah. hyped for that. Well, me too. I think that uh, this is like a very interesting uh, subject uh, to explore. Mm -hmm. I mean, we don't get get a lot of it. And fr from a Chinese perspective also, developed from a Chinese developer, I think that that has a lot to say that they they know kind of the culture and, and how to present it. And uh, I'm, I'm actually super hyped for this. This is a style of game that I really do enjoy. And if they, like you said, stay, if they stay kind of true to the, to the original, the source material, I think this is a really kind of, of the potential to be a cultural treasure. Yeah. The, not to mention it, it is the first Chinese AAA title, apparently. Mm -hmm. And if that's, um, if that's the case, then China is really looking to enter the gaming market by storm. Um, oh, yeah. so, you know, I mean, cause so far China is a big name in the gaming industry in terms of, um, for example, Tencent, how they've bought up a lot of studios, but they haven't developed yeah. themselves that much, I feel. So that's why like this, it's going to be interesting to see what they, what they bring to the table and how they're going to impact the rest of, um, the gaming industry when it hits. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I think that China has a lot of potential for like AAA titles. Uh, do you think this is uh, in any way <laughs> state sponsored? You know, just uh, <laughs> to promote China. Yeah, we were th talking a little bit about that before we went live, and I think that it it looks so fucking good. You know, that it does already have a lot of polish on it. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if that's just. Unreal 4 that, you know, if, if Unreal 4 is just so damn amazing, but it's not unheard of, you know, for, for kind of these type of products to be supported to, you know, show off the show of Chinese. Do, do, do you smell a conspiracy? No, I, I just, I don't, I wondered if you, you thought that was possible or I mean, yeah, of course. A crack pot being a crack pot. It is possible. Definitely, but if that just means that the game is going to have more resources to to develop, I'm all for it. <laughs> it's just like for sure, do your thing. Do your thing. It's um, no problem for us. I'll I'll play it. This is um this is really looking to be a day one purchase for me at this point. If this, yeah, um, I think for me too. Mm. It looks really. I mean, the the last part, like you said, the kind of escalation of his power. Yeah. You got to see the sneak peek of how powerful he'll get. That's just that just speaks to me so much, you know. Yeah, that, yeah. The slow progression <laughs> over time, getting more and more godlike. We all know your uh, your philosophy oh, yeah. in playing JRPGs <laughs> and that extreme oh, grind to just steamroll. <laughs> just fucking grind it out. Oh yeah, that's that's a way to play. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I hope that's gonna be the case with this game too. That you can you can do some grinding and just like mm, and some and maybe some like Metroidvania type stuff also. Yeah, because it does seem that you'll you'll get some kind of abilities like maybe transformations. Maybe mm -hmm. you can kind of reach secret areas and stuff like that. You know. And, yeah. yeah. It it looked a little bit like um, they took some concepts from both Dark Souls and Neo too. For me, those are two very, very nice games to borrow from or take inspiration from. And Metroidvania, Metroidvania style games, I really like as well. As long as it's not, you know, too much forced backtracking. Uh, whereas, mm -hmm. for example, yeah. I think Dark Souls did it pretty well, where they you have like, oh, you know, now you can open this shortcut, and it turns out a lot of it is interconnected and. Uh, yeah. that kind of level design i i hope they they lean more on that you don't like to kind of see a ledge that you can't jump up to and then later in the game you get the high jump <laughs> you know? no i do i, I do I like do. that yeah. yeah i do i do that's uh, a traditional <laughs> metroidvania type uh you know backtracking bejeez yeah it's just 
um, there's good backtracking and then there's dreary. Drive. Yeah, yeah. backtracking. Like, for example, that was a problem with uh, control for me mm -hmm. because there's a lot of like backtracking in that game. But in games like Castlevania or stuff like that, mm. it's fine. It's all good. You know, um, yeah. I think they yeah. did it better. Yeah. So I hope it's, um, I really hope it's more on that side of the spectrum. Yeah, if if at all, but it does certainly look like it uh, from the from the trailer that this that might be a gameplay element. Um, yeah, it's what more is there to say about this game? It's uh, really promising. Mm -hmm. Just uh, just <laughs> impressive. Yeah, very impressive. It it came out of nowhere and took us by storm, and I'm I'm absolutely here for for uh, China's first step into the gaming industry as yeah, a developer the, the debut know. yeah we're rooting for him we're rooting just defile me with your gaming developing proboscis <laughs> <laughs> ejaculate your your marvelous gaming development so juices in our eyes on my, upon, upon my visage please <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> Fucking proboscis is such a nasty word, man. <laughs> I think that yeah, that's that's got to be one of the most kind of suggestive words ever. <laughs> <laughs> the bulbous proboscis of game development. You're getting me all riled up. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. So anyway, so yeah, that's uh, that's it for today, guys. Um, you must remember though to always stay humid. And stay dank. <laughs>